If you have money in a bank account or a savings account right now, then this is one of the most important videos that you will see this year because we've just had a perfect example of something that I mentioned, I knew what had happened, but of course the government denied it. They've now done a U-turn and put a different spin on it and actually said, okay, yes, it was intentional, but we meant it for a good thing. And they didn't realize it was gonna result in the collapse of so many businesses in this country. A lot of infrastructure has ground to a halt. And now you're seeing a huge bank run right throughout the country. But not only that, we're gonna talk about a lot of other banks, a lot of these red flags, a lot of these alarm bells that we're seeing at the moment, because we can learn lessons from all of these events so that we know what's most likely to happen in our country, be that the USA, the UK, maybe you're in Europe, you have the European Central Bank, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, wherever you're watching this from, you can learn some valuable lessons to protect your money in the bank from this video. So let's get right into it then. Let's get started with this major event that has taken place and how we can learn from this. And then we're gonna go into a lot of the Western nations and, and talk about what's happening there. You may have already heard about some of these banks that are about to collapse. I'm just gonna talk through a couple of these so that you can see where there are risks. Maybe one of your banks is highlighted here. But the main thing that I want to really talk about is, in fact, let's go to the shared screen so you can see a visual representation of this first. Okay, so we've talked about central bank digital currencies before. And the last time we looked at this, we didn't have as many launches as we have now. In fact, let's look at April 2021, when we had very few central bank digital currencies that had actually launched. But then we got into pilot stage, which is this green bar here. Again, only 24% had launched. Development then was just 19%. Now you fast forward to December 2022, so only three months ago here, and watch how this changes. Already we're up to 10% who have now launched, 16% in pilot phase, and 30% in development. Now, let me show you why this is key, because this is what we are going to learn from today. Who is it that has most recently launched? That is Nigeria. And what is going on in Nigeria then? Well, nothing good at all. We'll get onto that because this is a major, I would say, scandal. And one that we can pay attention to and learn a very valuable lesson for our country and our bank accounts. So let's look then at, we have those that have launched. This is who is in pilot stage. And remember the BRICS nations who are accumulating gold at a rapid rate in order to create their own gold-backed currency. Well, what is the B? That stands for Brazil. So let's bring that in. That is Brazil. What is the R? That is Russia. The I is India. The C is China. And the S is South Africa. So they are your BRICS nations who are way ahead of the West. So who's under development? The United Kingdom. I still have a forecast on that for a launch in 2025. We have Canada. We have the United States. And of course, we have the European Union. So that will be the ECB, European Central Bank. Now, why am I sharing all of this with you? Well, because Nigeria is absolutely crucial to this and understanding what is going to happen next. So what was it they said was a coincidence and other governments got involved, other you know, commentators got involved. They said that it was a complete coincidence that there was a bank run in Nigeria where people couldn't get their cash. So what they've now done is they've done a U-turn. So let me read this out. The Central Bank of Nigeria said it redesigned the higher denomination banknotes to replace the dirty cash in circulation. We heard this same term this same tactic during covid cash was dirty we had to get rid of it also to tackle inflation well again changing banknotes does not tackle inflation because that is the expansion of the currency supply curb counterfeiting okay we'll give them that one i'm sure that is legitimate but here's the main one promote a cashless society 
it hoped the redesign would bring some of the money being hoarded by individuals and companies back into the financial system. So what does this mean then? What can we learn from this? Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Nigeria deliberately, their central bank, deliberately redesigned the banknotes, the cash, at the same time as they launched this central bank digital currency. They've said it in black and white there. They did it in order to get people to bring in this cash, which was now no longer legal tender, that they're saying the hoarders. You see the language that they're using here, hoarders. So they wanted the people to bring the cash in while it was still legal tender and then swap it for the new currency. But what did they do? They deliberately created a shortage of the new currency. So when you brought in the old currency, which remember, it's just, it's just paper. You know, it's, it's not worth anything. There is no intrinsic value to the paper. So what happened, they made it illegal so that when people brought it into the bank to exchange it, they were able to deposit the money in the bank, but then they couldn't withdraw at that point any new cash because there was a limited supply. Simple economics 101, you limit the supply and typically this will increase value, but that's not what happened here. Businesses have just completely ground to a halt. They're, a lot of them are closed. Some people are talking about how their clients have just cut in half. Grocery stores are only accepting cash in a lot of places. So it's caused a massive issue. The government is being very slow to tackle it and deal with it. Why? It's quite obvious. They're doing it because they are hoping that they're gonna break the will of the people and they're gonna reach a tipping point and push them over into using this new digital currency. But the people are staying pretty resilient and they're not moving over to this digital currency. They want the cash. Now, let me give you another example and then we'll see how we can apply this. I mean, I've got pages and pages of other things we can talk about as well, where a lot of these banks are very close to collapse. But the other example I wanna give you is China. So this was in Henan province. And I did a full video about this. So I'm not gonna go over it all again, but what I talked about was how they use the digital ID. So this is what the West wants you to have. They want you to have a digital ID as well, a digital passport, which connects everything in your life. Um, even your social credit score, your carbon credit score of the future to make sure that you're a good little citizen. Oh yes. Well, what China did was they abused this system. So you had your digital ID and they used it during COVID, during lockdowns and everything else. And even though these people had a green pass, what happened was they went to get onto the transport to go to Henan province where the bank just wouldn't pay anyone any money. All of their savings just got locked up and they couldn't access it. So people just couldn't tra travel. They couldn't get on a train, they couldn't get on a plane, they couldn't do any form of travel because their digital ID went red. Even though they passed their test, they, the ID went red to stop them traveling. And this again is some of the dangers of this new digital system that's being created. Because how are you gonna spend any of your money or get access to any of your money or savings if it's just numbers on a screen in a bank account? Especially they keep talking about this catastrophic cyber attack event that's gonna happen in the next two years, so more like 18 months now. And they keep saying this could completely reset, their favorite word, the financial system. And nobody will know how much they've got because they, they don't print out statements. They keep all online. We are affiliated with a 501c3 called We Are The 51%. This is based off of all the good people in the world giving extra effort to have a better way of life. You can donate, sponsor, or even make a tax deductible payment to help these children to get food so no child goes to sleep hungry. How you can help is to go to our website, matt55.com. You go to the bottom right-hand corner of the video, then click the button that says Retail Customers. You can choose either option, the $5 or the $40 donation options. Either click the Add button below the dollar amount of which one that you choose. Then the next page, choose the quantity of the donation amount. For example, if you'd like to donate $1,000, then you can change the quantity amount to 200. Then click the checkout button in the bottom right hand corner. 
And then on the next page, enter your credit card information, name and address. We will send you out a receipt for the amount so you can write this off as a donation on your taxes or also on your business taxes. Remember, our main goal is $1 million to help sponsor 20,000 children. 1 million people in the world will lose their life due to starvation due to the famine that has already begun by 2025. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah.